Countries uh, all over the world uh, have uh, national security laws uh, and it's universally recognised that citizens have a duty to safeguard their uh, country's uh, interests. Uh, unfortunately, these, have, uh, these principles have largely broken down uh, in Hong Kong uh, and there is a, a, a lacuna uh, where the uh, uh, nat relevant national security laws should be. Uh, Hong Kong was entrusted in 1997 under the basic law which is Hong Kong's mini constitution and which was enacted uh, by the National People's Congress in 1990 uh, with uh, enacting its own national security laws covering such things as uh, sedition, subversion, secession, uh, treason uh, and so on. But uh, 23 years after the reunification that still hasn't happened. Uh, and so there's obviously great concern about this uh, elsewhere in the country because it's, a, it's an obligation which uh, Hong Kong owes to the rest of the country. But this uh, particular obligation uh, hasn't been honoured uh, and that has been exploited by uh, uh, hostile forces. Uh, so this is obviously a matter of great concern. So even though Hong Kong was authorised uh, by the National People's Congress to enact its own uh, national security laws uh, in Article 23 of the Basic Law, uh, the uh, issue of national security was never uh, within Hong Kong's autonomy. It, it always remained a, a matter for the uh, country uh, as a whole. Because Hong Kong hasn't acted to, as it was required to do within 23 years to enact the national security laws, this has created problems uh, and as a result of that the National People's Congress has now decided to take uh, action itself. Uh, and of course, as the National People's Congress is the uh, ultimate uh, organ of state authority uh, in China, uh, it has the authority to, to do exactly that uh, under the uh, constitution uh, of China. Jurisdictions all over the world do have national security laws. Hong Kong is now the only part of China, incredibly, which doesn't have any national security laws. Uh, and this has been taken advantage of by people who want to harm Hong Kong directly uh, and harm China itself indirectly by using Hong Kong. We've seen uh, since uh, last June that there has been an escalation of extreme political style violence, which has threatened the stability of Hong Kong. Uh, it sought to challenge the authority uh, of the central authorities over Hong Kong uh, and it's also uh, had uh, an element of secessionism uh, attached to it. Some of the violent protesters have made it quite clear that they want to have an independent Hong Kong. They want to sever uh, uh, Hong Kong from the rest of the country. In other words, and they have some foreign backing to do this, in other words they want to go back to the 19th century when foreign powers were able to carve up uh, uh, China at will and which left uh, China very weakened. But what they have to understand is that uh, secession will not be tolerated uh, in China, that the territorial integrity uh, of the country has to be protected uh, and that the people of Hong Kong have a duty to the rest of China to ensure that Hong Kong is not used uh, as a base for anti-China activities, for subversion against the central authorities uh, or for promoting uh, uh, violent secessionism uh, here on Hong Kong soil. Uh, we've seen some terrible atrocities over the last year. We've seen uh, uh, police officers being attacked with petrol bombs. We've seen uh, uh, people being killed and maimed often because when their only crime is to have a different view to that of the protesters. Uh, we've, seen, uh, we've seen the train stations being torched. We've seen many businesses being damaged and destroyed, causing a lot of people to lose their jobs. And we don't have the, uh, all the laws that are necessary in order to combat these type of menaces, uh, which is obviously very concerning. Clearly we do have some criminal laws, uh, but we don't have the full amount of laws that are necessary to deal with this type of terrorist-related uh, activity. And what is very concerning as well is that even though there has been a lull in recent times, uh, I'm sure that the uh, extremists are only biding their time. Why do I say that? Well, in recent uh, months the police have made very large seizures uh, of explosives, of handguns, of assault rifles, uh, of bomb-making equipment. Uh, and I'm sure, I have no doubt, that uh, this was being prepared in order to resume the urban warfare uh, here in Hong Kong that we saw earlier on. But even though the police have made some significant seizures, uh, this is probably only the tip of the iceberg. And there's still a lot of, I'm sure there is still a lot of uh, weaponry out there. So it's absolutely vital that before the, uh, 
the war on society resumes again, that uh, Hong Kong does have in place all the tools it requires in order to defend itself uh, and to defend the country as a whole. I imagine the law will be fairly precise. It will indicate what the ingredients of the offence are, like other laws uh, do in Hong Kong. Uh, and provided that is done, provided there is exactitude in other words, then it will be clear what the elements of the offence are. Uh, and if the elements are clear, then it will help not only to deter potential criminals from committing that type of offence, whether it be subversion or secession or terrorist uh, type activity, but it will also assist the law enforcers in identifying what they need to look for as a matter of evidence uh, in order to bring the charges. Uh, it will assist the prosecutors uh, because they will be able to tell whether the legal ingredients of the offence are satisfied and it will also assist the courts uh, in due course when the cases are tried uh, because uh, they will know exactly what uh, the elements of the offence are uh, and whether they've been proved. Uh, and remember as well that uh, convictions will only occur where the uh, guilt of the accused person has been satisfied beyond reasonable doubt. And that will be the test which is used in all other criminal cases. So legal processes, the usual legal processes which are applied to all other types of criminal offences will be equally applied to these offences. If there are uncertainties or ambiguities, then I imagine they would be resolved in favour of the accused person. Uh, and that's why it's important that the law is precise uh, and that it's clear uh, and that uh, it, it can be easily enforced. Uh, and I'm sure that the drafters are very much aware of that uh, and they will be keeping these points in mind. <laughs>